A very good afternoon to all. Sir. Hello? Audible? Okay. So I, Anil Jain Amy, on behalf of the Department of EC, AIET, I welcome back all for this uh, third session of uh, day three of FDP on uh, trends in MEMS and nanotechnology. So we have with us our next eminent speaker, Dr. Pradeep Dikshit, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Bombay. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, yes. Anish. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Audible, audible, yeah. sir. Good. Uh, one second. So I'll just uh, uh, give us a brief uh, introduction on our uh, speakers. Sure. <laughs> okay. I now request uh, uh, Ms. Madhu to introduce our next speaker. Dr. Over to you, Madhu. Hi, Madhuki from Department of EC. Feel privileged to introduce our speaker, Dr. Pradeep Dikshit. Dr. Pradeep Dikshit is an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, IIT Bombay. He has earned his PhD degree from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, in the year 2008. He had his postdoctoral fellowship in Packaging Research Center, Georgia Tech, with Professor Rao Tumala. Before IIT Bombay, he was a senior researcher in VTT Technical Research Center of Finland, where he developed 3D packaging technology for MEMS sensors. Dr. Pradeep Dikshit is an associate editor of Microsystem Technologies. So far, he has published more than 50 articles in peer-reviewed journals. He received Norman Hackerman Young Author Award in 2006 for his work on aspect ratio-dependent copper filling processes. His research interests are in micro-machining, MEMS fabrication, and 3D packaging. By this brief introduction about Sir, I would like to welcome Dr. Pradeep Dikshit for this FDP. I heartily welcome you, Sir. I okay. hereby request you to take over the session. Okay, so thank you uh, very much, Madhu, for uh, briefly introducing me uh, to the audience. Okay, so I am the faculty here in the department of mechanical engineering and uh, today i'm going to talk about a topic which is going to be a bit kind of interdisciplinary okay so this topic is uh, uh, maybe suitable for both mechanical engineering faculty members if you have any and also for electronics engineering okay uh, so let me share this uh, slides let me see um, uh, can you please confirm uh, if you're able to see the slides? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. OK, Visible. right, right. And to save the bandwidth, I will basically switch off my video, OK? So that uh, for those guys uh, uh, who are having lower bandwidth, they will be, OK? Fine, fine. Right. OK, so let me just, uh, so I'm going to the full screen mode, OK? I hope that this thing is clear uh, to everybody, OK? Uh, so today, uh, my topic uh, of this presentation is going to be electrochemical discharge machining, okay, which is going to be utilized for glass-based MEMS applications. So most of you, I understand, you are, are familiar with MEMS uh, process, okay, and today we are going to talk about MEMS packaging, okay, and I will introduce you that how we can utilize a process called electrochemical discharge machining which in uh, short we call it as a ECDM, okay? And if you look at the background of this uh, title slide, you will see a glass uh, slide, okay? In which we have written imprint and DSIR, okay? So majority of this research work which we are going to present today, uh, it is a basically a result of a funded project and project uh, title is imprint. And this is basically sponsored by DSIR, which is Department of Scientific and Industrial Research and MHRD. Okay. Uh, so the outline of my presentation uh, is given in this slide. So first, I will basically introduce you what we understand by the microsystem packaging. Okay. And then we will talk about what is the current trend which is happening in the field of microsystem packaging that uh, we are moving from two dimensional packaging to three dimensional packaging okay after that i will uh, indicate that what are the application of glass as a substrate so most of you uh, from electronics engineering background you know that uh, traditionally we have been using silicon as a substrate 
okay cell can have a wafer but uh, for several application especially for radio frequency uh, mems application for microfluidic application for biological application people are now using glass okay so we will compare glass as a substrate and we are going to compare with silicon okay after that i am going to talk about the main research work which is going to be in the field of ecdm okay i will introduce you the the basic mechanism what is the basic fundamental what are the important process parameters in case of electrochemical discharge machining and how this particular process is going to used for etching glass based materials okay so that is going to be the second part of that and after that i will uh, show you uh, the fabrication of through glass via okay so this is a one of the major interconnection technology which is basically being uh, utilized in mems okay so pgv or it is also called psv uh, this is this technology is needed for 3d packaging okay so uh, how we can utilize this psv or pgv technology i am going to talk about that and finally i will indicate you some of the basic application basic prototype which we are making here in iit bombay okay so uh, one of the major objective of my research group here in iit bombay is to develop low cost fabrication process especially for mems application okay so if you have listened to the other uh, presenter in this fdp program you might be knowing that uh, in order to carry out any kind of a meaningful research work in mems you typically require a clean room process right you require process like lithography oxidation process etching process and so on which requires a quite a expensive infrastructure okay however um, uh, there are some low cost alternative which can be utilized to replace those expensive process and this is the major objective of my research group here in iit bombay okay now uh, i hope that everybody is a uh, bit familiar with the mems process okay or mems device so mainly traditionally mems is nothing but about a sensors okay so sensor as you know in our human body we have a five sensors right we have eyes ears skin tongue okay so this is all sensor so similarly in uh, microelectromechanical systems or in short we call mems we are mainly dealing with mems sensors okay the part of actuator is relatively less okay so you might be knowing about uh, this accelerometer which is being utilized in our cars okay to deployment something called airbag sensor okay or airbag deployment right you might be knowing about some of the pressure sensor okay which is being utilized in different application you might be knowing about uh, gyroscope okay so all of our mobile phone smartphones they have this kind of a sensors like accelerometer gyroscopes okay which is basically making these smartphones smart right so if you are watching your mobile phone and you are uh, moving from horizontal mode to vertical mode you will see that screen automatically detects that you are moving from horizontal to vertical mode right so screen automatically tilts its position and this uh, this working is due to a mems sensing device which is a gyro okay in short we call it as a gyroscope right so important thing is that uh, if you look at uh, research work which is happening within india or overseas we have several research groups several industrial companies okay which are working on mems sensors okay however okay the fabrication of mems sensors alone is not sufficient okay why because think about our human body right so human body let me draw a picture here right so this is a human okay we have a sensor right eyes ears okay so due to this uh, uh, organs we basically sense some of the object but after that these whatever information which our eyes are for example gathering okay they need to communicate to our head right our brain and then the brain basically detect that information and it evaluates whether this thing is good or bad so for example imagine that you are walking on a road right and suddenly you are looking at this kind of snake right so this is a snake okay so now what will happen here so when you are walking it okay your eyes will see this object okay which is snake here and these eyes the information will go back to your brain right now what will happen brain basically compare this piece of information with the stored information uh, in it okay and brain will tell you okay no this is a dangerous object right so we need to be careful so what we will do 
brain will basically give a signal to your hand or leg and then you will basically move away so if you look at this of uh, this uh, analogy so what we need we need brain right we need sensors and we need to require some of the actuator okay which is basically leg or hands and then you need this neural network which is basically nothing but interconnects right so similarly uh, in all kind of a commercial devices okay we have a sensors okay we also have asic which is known as a application specific integrated chip okay and we also need some kind of interconnects okay so here we have example here so if you look at this example here okay this is a packaged accelerometer chip okay so this piece here this is a, a accelerometer uh, device which is nothing but a mems device if you look at on the left hand side we have a, this chip which is known as ic chip okay and if you look at carefully between mems and ic we have some kind of a wire bonds right and these wire bonds are nothing but a interconnect so what they do they basically transfer the information uh, from the mems die to the asic and whatever response of asic it is going to carry forward to the mems die and so on okay so this is this whole thing of forming interconnections okay bonding this is known as a packaging okay so packaging is basically it's provide a interface okay between a mems to the outside world okay which is a basically nothing but a users okay so everything from the user interface okay to the mems die is known as a packaging okay so if you summarize if you summarize the main function of the packaging it has a three functions first of all it provides the mechanical interconnections mechanical protection so all these mems sensors here they are very fragile very small okay very delicate okay so you need to provide some kind of a protective environment so that any kind of external shock should not damage the sensitive mem sensors okay so that is one of the major thing second and most important one is the electrical interconnection okay so you need to provide faster interconnection so that whatever is the sensing information okay it can be communicated to ic and whatever is the response it can be uh, uh, go back to the mem sky okay so you need to provide a faster interconnection it means that the signal delay has to be as small as possible so signal delay has to be as as possible okay and third one which is also getting very important is the thermal heat dissipation so if you look at uh, our smartphones okay you might have noticed that uh, if you communicate if you talk or you if you play any kind of video game in your mobile phone you will see that video games it becomes very heated right on the back side you will see that uh, it is very hot and the temperature could easily be 50 60 70 degree celsius so one of the major challenge in the modern device is to provide efficient ways by which we can remove the heat from the local hot spot okay so these are the three functions uh, major function of the packaging okay and let me tell you that uh, if you look at any smartphones any handheld device okay the cost of the packaging is the biggest factor about sub 70% cost is coming because of the packaging so if you look at uh, really the cost of ic versus cost of mems they are less than 30% okay so majority of the factor here and this is why a lot of emphasis is going on on the packaging activity okay so let me uh, show you so most of you uh, who are in electronics thing you may have seen this kind of a ceramic chip carrier so this is made of ceramic you can see this kind of a flat pins which is a gold plated interconnections and at the in the center you will see that this is a uh, basically a ic chip and this is a mems die okay so providing interconnection between ic and mems providing interconnection between the this uh, chip carrier to pcb they are all come under the packaging activities okay so in short packaging basically provides interface between devices like ic or mems to the outside world okay i hope this that this is clear now let me just to you give one more example of accelerometer because this is one of the very popular uh, device okay so if you look at accelerometer okay this uh, slide this picture i have taken from bosch okay so bosch in germany this is one of the biggest company working in the field of mems okay now if you look at on the background right so all this thing you can see this is background they are the individual chip 
okay these are the individual mems chip which are fabricated on a wafer right so you can see the thousand and what you are looking at on the front side this is nothing but a packaged version so this is a packaged accelerometer chip right so you can see that uh, actual mems die is very small something like this okay but compared to this one it has very large so 4.5 millimeter to 3 millimeter okay this is that packaged mems accelerometer which is being utilized in most of the automobile cars right so whenever your car hits the any kind of obstacle or any kind of a crash okay you will have a airbag will be opening up okay so this particular chip is responsible for opening up those airbags right now if you look at the cross section of uh, this air, air uh, this chip okay it looks like something like this okay so what you are looking at here you can see that uh, okay this is the boundary i'm drawing the boundary here and inside this uh, uh, black epoxy the cross section looks something like this okay so it will have a asic die which is nothing but we can imagine that this is like like a brain okay and we have this is a basically a mems sensor okay right so what will happen okay so whenever uh, it will sense some kind of a deacceleration okay the response will go from this mems chip to die through this this is very important this is a wire bond which is also shown here this is nothing but a interconnections or interconnects okay right and uh, they will basically communicate with each other right so, so i hope that uh, this thing is clear to everybody right so now if you look at uh, this kind of uh, packaging okay so so far uh, this kind of packaging activity is happening on a chip scale what does it mean so chip scale means that we are typically creating this kind of a wafer okay let me this is wafer and a wafer can have a several hundreds or even thousand chips okay so what people do currently doing it okay they are doing this kind of a simulation or dicing process let me just draw it quickly okay so we can do some kind of a dicing okay so dicing means the separation of individual dies okay so you can take all these things something like that so what we'll do we'll pick up a single die for example in this okay i can pick up this particular die okay so i have got this uh, chip and this chip is going to be packaged okay so it, this chip is going to put on a chip carrier so this is a chip carrier and then you can attach it and then you can do this kind of a wire bond okay this, so this is a traditional approach which is happening uh, so far okay that's why this is called as a chip scale package or chip level package because packaging is happening at a chip scale okay but uh, due to the demands of reducing the price okay people are moving from chip level package to something called wafer level package wafer level package means all the packaging activities they are required to be happening at a wafer scale okay so if you look at uh, the example of a smartphone right for example whatever smartphone you are using it whether it's a redmi or a apple you can easily see that with upcoming uh, version you will see that the price of uh, these uh, smartphones are not really going up okay so within a 8000 9000 rupees you can easily get a smartphone which has having 4 gb ram and a very good processor okay 64 gigabit uh, memory so if you see that why the price of these uh, smartphones are not going up because one thing is going to be competition second thing is that advancement in the field of packaging activity okay so people are right now moving up already from chip scale to wafer scale package okay so if once you are performing the packaging activities at a wafer scale it means that if a wafer has for example let's say that we have a 1000 devices okay right so if you perform at a wafer scale package so all these 1000 th devices would be packaged at the same time so it means that we don't have to do individually all these devices will be packaged at the same time okay so this is the reason why the cost of this uh, 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 packaged uh, smartphones are basically being reduced okay 
So now, um, the second trend is that, okay, I mentioned to you that uh, from chip scale package, people are moving to wafer level package. Then the second thing is that about the, the trend of 3D packaging, okay? So now if you look at uh, any kind of a metropolitan area, let's say Bangalore or Mumbai, right? Earlier, we used to have a lot of land. People used to make their own bungalow, right? But now if you look at uh, any metropolitan city, okay, even for example, second tier metropolitan cities, okay, we do not have that much land, okay. So the only option for us is to go in a vertical direction, right. So the same thing, that's why we have a flat culture that uh, we don't have any kind of a ground, we are moving in a high uh, level buildings. Same thing is also happening in the field of a, a electronics, right. So if you look at uh, any kind of a memory device, any kind of memory storage, okay. So now uh, I remember that we have a 256. Now we have a 256, even 512 SSD drives which are available here easily, okay. If you look at their size, okay, it's very, very small, okay. And if I compare uh, when I was a student uh, in Singapore, I have got my first uh, flash drive which was 512 megabyte memory, half GB, okay? And uh, believe me, the price was something about 80 Singapore dollar that time, okay? Now, if I compare after 15 years, okay, in the same price, I can easily get 512 gigabyte memory, okay? So why uh, it is happening, okay? So the, the thing which is responsible is what we know as a three-dimensional packaging, okay? 3D packaging, okay? So what happens here in the field of uh, packaging area, okay, that we are not uh, integrating, we are not packaging on a 2D plane. So earlier, we used to have something like this, okay. So this is substrate, this is one chip, we used to keep it in XY plane, okay, and we used to basically interconnect like that, okay. But now because of the shrinking space, okay, people are going for like this, okay, substrate is like that, another substrate is going to be on top of that and something like this, okay, so this is a z-axis. So now if you compare this versus this, so this is known as a two-dimensional, this is known as a three-dimensional, okay, so you can easily see that the footprint area is drastically reduced, okay, so from this we have gone to back here, okay. So compared to the older packaging technology, now we have, a, we have a less footprint area, okay? The size has only gone up in vertical direction, okay? But not on the XY plane. So it has basically helped in reducing the overall package size, okay? That's why now on your any smartphone, you have multiple devices. You have a high memory capacity, you have a very good camera phones, Okay. You have a lot of sensors, okay, and if you uh, compare with the older Nokia phones, okay, things have drastically improved now, okay, but the size of the phone has remained more or less same, okay. Now, this, if you want to uh, make this kind of thing, okay, which is fine, you can do the bonding, but you also need to provide some kind of a vertical interconnect so that this top device, which is I'm indicating here, three, for example, can communicate with the one, okay? So in order to uh, provide interconnections or electrical signal, okay, we need to create some kind of a vertical wire, okay? So if you look at uh, this picture here, so we have a semiconductor substrate, it could be silicon, okay? It could be fused silica, it could be alumina, it could be anything, right? But if you create some kind of a vertical holes, okay? And if you fill these holes with a conductive material, okay? So the yellow color here indicate a conductive material. Most commonly copper is used as a uh, conductive material. So now what would happen here? Okay, so if you have a multiple devices, okay, which are kept on top of each other, and if you have these kind of a vertically filled wire in which you have putting uh, conductive material, so what would happen? The electrical signal can go through these wires together. Okay, so these conductive field via they can be interconnected in a vertical direction. Okay, so this this technology is known as a through substrate via. Okay, 
So substrate, like I said, it could be silicon, it could be glass, it could be alumina. Okay. The through word is means that it's a through via, and via means basically conductive field uh, interconnections. Okay. So what is the advantage? So because of these TSVs, okay, we people are able to go from 2D to 3D packaging. Okay. Now what are the advantage? As I mentioned to you, that reduced footprint area. Okay. So footprint area has been really reduced. Shorter interconnection means. Okay. So you can compare that. So for example, if you look at uh, this picture here, let me just rub it off. Okay. So on the back side, you can see this one. Okay. This is are the traditional wire bond. Okay. This is a traditional wire bond, which is also known as a what uh, two dimensional interconnections. Okay. So compared to these wire bonds, if you if you can create uh, through holes, you will see that compared to wire bonds, the interconnect length has been reduced. Okay. And reduced interconnection length means if you if the length has reduced, you can all already know that the resistance of the interconnect path will also go down. So if L is going down, R is going to down. And RC signal delay, okay, which is responsible for the signal delay, okay, it will also be reduced. So it means that using this uh, through substrate via technology, okay, the advanced 3D packaging is going to be much faster compared to 2D packaging. Okay, I hope that this thing is clear uh, with everybody. So if you look at the features, what are the geometrical dimension? So these vias which are here, okay, it, the dimension range from 5 micrometer to 200 micrometer, depth anything from 25 to 400 micrometer, substrate could be silicon, glass or alumina, okay, this uh, what are the conductive materials? So traditionally people are using copper, okay, in certain application like uh, advanced FEOL, Okay, front end of, end of the line uh, application, copper is not allowed. So in those application, you can use polysilicon. Okay, so these are the some of the important feature of those uh, TSV or TGV. Okay, so let me give you a couple of commercial examples. So those who are interested, you can just type uh, a TGV or TSV in Google and you will find plenty of results. Okay. So uh, I will only show you the two results, okay, because of the time constraints. So this uh, is a famous picture from Samsung, okay. So I have mentioned to you that how the memory stack device, okay. So in 2005, when I bought my first thing, it was 512. And now we have 512 gigabyte memory is basically available in market, okay. Now what's happening here? So if you look at this thing, okay, okay, here are the stack devices. So one, two, three, four, and five. There are five stack devices which is shown in this picture. Okay. Now Samsung is able to uh, stack up to 128 wafers in a vertical fashion. Okay. Not here we have shown only five, but Samsung has already a commercial product which are utilizing 128 dies in a vertical fashion. Okay. And these vertical uh, stack dies are connected through the copper field via. So here is a picture of uh, this thing. Okay, this is a zoom picture. Okay, so you can see that this is the uh, pink color indicates about the copper. Okay, so so the copper field uh, TSV are responsible for interconnections. Okay, and uh, between these stacks, we are going to have some kind of a solder bumps. So traditionally, we are using copper tin based uh, solder joints. Okay, so these copper tin solder joints are basically for a bonding and copper is for responsible for the interconnection application. Okay. Now here, the substrate is silicon. Now, uh, I'm showing you the next picture here, which is basically from a company uh, Hums in Germany. Okay, so instead of using uh, silicon, they are uh, utilizing glass. Okay, so uh, on the left hand side, you will see a commercial uh, traditional way of two dimensional thing where you have a ceramic carrier, you have a, a application specific ICs, okay, you have a MEMS die, and th those are connected through this wire bond. Okay, so this was the traditional older technology. Now, what uh, this company has done, okay, they have come out from 2D to 3D. Okay, so this is a 3D product here where the substrate is glass okay so for example you can see that this is a mems die here 
and uh, this is a glass wafer and in glass wafer they have created this kind of a vertically uh, wire okay which is shown in this picture here and uh, that's why that this is called tgv tgv means through glass via okay if you are using silicon then it's called through silicon via okay so now you can easily see that from this particular uh, footprint area the the footprint area has really reduced almost half okay so in this picture azic die and mems die are basically connected in a two dimensional plane but here okay it is connected in a vertical direction okay the zoom view is shown here okay so the top is is a azic die and bottom is going to be a mems die okay so similarly uh, there are a lot of applications but i am not uh, going to go in detail okay we are going to stick with this one here okay right so in summary uh, those who are interested let me just show you that that how people are doing this wafer level packaging okay so uh, this uh, animation shows you so this is a basically a mems die okay i am just showing uh, only one die but uh, this could be wafer level package okay so you make separately you make uh, mems uh, wafer then you take another wafer okay and you bond them together okay so this is another wafer okay you bond them together by using uh, any kind of anodic bonding or you can use uh, uh, thermo compression bonding okay so for example in this picture i am indicating copper tin copper bonding okay so idea here is that we have to perform wafer level packaging of mems devices so this is a mems uh, chip here okay we have a wafer you do the bonding at a wafer scale and after that you create basically holes so what you do you create holes in the wafer by any technique so for example for making holes you can use a plasma etching process you can use laser ablation you can use any other technique okay so green color indicate here is a insulation layer okay and orange indicates here basically a copper layer so now you can see that okay we we can have a communication so communication electrical interconnects will go from this thing okay it will going to have it here and then you can pass it to the another layer and so on okay so this why this is known as a copper filled tsv okay now after that you can basically do a complete filling and you can make the solder bumps and so on okay okay right. so this part is known as a mems fabrication okay and everything else is known as a packaging okay so packaging means bonding okay so so this uh, bonding activity okay making formation of this uh, through uh, substrate vias through glass via making this uh, kind of uh, interconnection there all these activities which will come under the packaging area okay right so i hope that uh, the audience are a bit clear about what i mean by packaging activity okay because when you go in the market to buy any kind of a commercial product okay what you get is a packaged chip not a individual mem sensors okay and after that these are solder bumps so you can put them in any kind of a pcb and then you can basically use the exit okay right so now uh, let me go to my second part okay so i hope that uh, you guys are uh, fully aware of that what is the meaning of packaging now i am moving to something called glass so, so traditionally people are using silicon as a substrate okay so silicon is good okay it's, it's a easily available material but uh, it has certain limitation right so one of the major limitation is that this is not a transparent material okay so because of the opaque nature it will have a certain Uh, issues okay especially when you want to do bonding if you want to do any kind of alignment okay and another uh, major problem is that it is a, is a semiconductor in nature okay it means that it is not a perfect insulator right so if you want to uh, use uh, uh, this silicon substrate for high frequency uh, radio transmission application for example everybody is right now uh is talking about 5g application or maybe in near future we will have a sixth generation uh, radio communication right so all this radio communication is happening at a very high frequency for example 2 gigahertz 5 gigahertz and so on right so 
uh, in this kind of frequency application, silicon, if you use silicon substrate, right, it has uh, substrate losses, okay? And uh, because of the substrate losses, uh, we have to utilize a very thick insulation layer, which is a very expensive process, okay? So alternatively, what people are trying to do, they are trying to explore a glass-based uh, substrate, for example, fused silica, okay? So those who are not familiar, so when we say normal glass, okay, so normal glass means that silica, okay. But normal glass, for example, those we are uh, using in kitchen application or uh, uh, normal generalized application, it has a lot of impurity. For example, sodium impurity, we have a boron impurity, okay, other one, calcium also, okay. So if you remove all these impurities, okay, what you, you get is fused silica, okay. So fused silica and quartz, they are pure silicon oxide, okay? It does not have any, any impurity. Now, what is the difference between uh, fused silica and quartz? Quartz is a crystalline nature, fused silica is amorphous, okay? But both are having pure impurity, okay? But uh, other uh, glass, for example, soda lime glass or borosilicate glass, okay? It has a metallic impurity and because of that, uh, in certain foundries, uh, we are not permitting the soda lime glass for, because it has, has a sodium impurity, right? So, but anyway, if you look at these material, so few silica and quartz, they are perfect insulator, okay? They are optically transparent, okay? So, because of optical transparency, you can easily use these uh, substrate in a microfluidic application, you can use in a biological application, okay? Uh, you can easily monitor the progress, what's going on, okay? Glass has a very good dimensional stability, okay? So up to 600 degrees Celsius, okay? It will, it, it will not have any kind of a problem, okay? Uh, it has a very good chemical resistance, okay? So as you know, that we can store uh, any kind of acids in glass bottle, right? Glass is only etched by hydrofluoric acid, okay? Which is a very, very strong acid. So except HF acid, Okay, all other acids uh, or basic solution, you can keep it easily in glass bottle. So it means that it has a very good chemical resistance. Okay, and most importantly, okay, for radio communication, radio frequency application, it is a very, very high electrical resistivity. Okay, so because of these two uh, advantage, optical transparency and uh, higher electrical resistivity, people are trying to utilize uh, glass in a packaging application, especially for a radio frequency type application, okay? So couple of examples have been shown here, okay? So here we have application for microfluidics, okay? And on the right hand side picture, there is a uh, image for packaging of MEMS device. So here we have a MEMS device, which is nothing but a uh, accelerometer, okay? This is a moving part, okay? And this one is a glass substrate. So what is the advantage here? Because of the optical transparency, we have very easy uh, for the alignment purpose. Okay, and after that, you can easily create this kind of a glass field via, and uh, we can utilize for uh, packaging applications. Okay, now we know uh, what are the possible application, what are the advantage of glass versus silicon. Okay, let me sh give you some more pictures. Okay. So these uh, are some of the commercial uh, application of glass, especially for microfluidic application, okay? Now, you may have heard about a term called lab on a chip, okay? Because of the COVID, there has been a lot of interest on developing these kind of solutions, which can give us a very uh, faster uh, prediction whether somebody has COVID or not, right? So a lot of people are working on this kind of a paper-based uh, devices, glass-based devices, and here are the, some of the applications. So those who are interested, okay, they can basically go to these uh, website and they can find out about the more on that. Okay, so traditionally, if you look at uh, the traditional way of uh, using this uh, biomedical devices, people are using PDMS, okay, which is a kind of a polymer. But if you can make these devices uh, in glass, it is going to be very, very uh, convenient, very easy because of the, of the optical transparency. The challenge is that how to machine glass, okay? So glass, as I said, that uh, chemical uh, etching of the glass is very difficult. It has a very good chemical resistance, okay? Glass is also brittle material. So the moment you want to do any kind of mechanical based drilling or milling process, okay, it is going to crack, right? 
so the traditional way of the glass is uh, either by the laser ablation process okay so this is a co2 laser okay in normal application we require femtosecond laser okay which is a very very expensive uh, process uh, second image here is from, from the plasma etching okay so you can traditionally you can do the glass etching by plasma but the etching rate is very very slow so typical etch rate is going to be something about 1 to 2 micrometer per minute which is a very very slow etch rate okay and both of these process laser ablation as well as the uh, this uh, plasma etching it are they are expensive process they require a very expensive machines okay and they are not easily affordable by uh, like normal researchers okay so if you look at uh, within india uh, i mean up to the best of my knowledge we do not have any machine any plasma etching machine which can do the uh, thick glass etching we have some laser ablation facility, femtosecond laser facility in CMTI, Bangalore, or maybe in ISC. But uh, I would say that the entire India, there will be less than 10, 15 machines, not more than that. Okay. So, so when we started uh, working on this kind of area, because of my uh, prior background in MEMS process, okay. So the question was that, is there any low cost alternative? Okay. Is there any low cost alternative? Okay. We, process which can give us the glass machining or glass etching results okay because we in iit bombay we do not have a femtosecond laser facility we do not have any plasma etching facility okay the traditional way of uh, drilling they will not work in glass okay so we were working on this kind of a problem and then we uh, we have uh, investigated uh, in detail and then we come out with this kind of process okay which is known as a electrochemical discharge machine which is going to be uh, my main thing here okay so this process is basically based on electrochemical discharge machine process okay this particular technique is utilized for machining okay those who are not from mechanical engineering background machining means material removal okay material removal okay so this technique ecdm is mainly utilized for uh, machining brittle material non conductive material like glass okay borosilicate glass soda lime glass quartz alumina okay you can do alumina machining also ceramic okay you can do is silicon nitride okay silicon carbide can also be in principle can be machined but that's very very difficult thing okay so <coughs> so this uh, ecdm process um, Sorry. Uh, so this is a, going to be a hybrid process. Okay. So this process is a hybrid process uh, of ECM and EDM. Okay. So those who are from mechanical engineering background. Okay. Okay. Electrochemical machining and EDM they may, may be familiar with ECM and EDM. Those who are not from mechanical engineering, if you recall your uh, 12th class uh, thing, you may have gone through something called known as a Faraday law. Okay. Faraday law of electrolysis. Okay, so this process is basically utilize the basic principle of Faraday law, okay, and discharge process. Okay, so it starts with the electrolysis process, okay, and uh, due to this electrolysis process, it basically creates some hydrogen film. So I will show you one video later on, okay. Let me see if I can go back. Yeah, so let's see if I have. Yeah, so I will show you this video so that you can understand a bit and then, then I will come back to you again. Okay, so the process is basically utilize this kind of a tool electrode. So this is a tool electrode. We have a counter electrode. Okay, so this is going to be negative polarity. This is going to be a positive polarity. Okay, and uh, somewhat here we have a workpiece which is not visible, but here we have the workpiece. Okay. Now, uh, uh, this uh, between the tool electrode and the workpiece, we have an electrolyte. So we have electrolyte here, which is uh, either we can use NaOH or we can use KOH. Okay, this is electrolyte, right? So once we between this tool electrode and uh, uh, counter electrode, let me give you polarity here. Okay, I will connect. Okay, like that. So when you apply a voltage of uh, some, let's, let's say 40 volt onwards, okay, you will see you will have a water electrolysis, and that water electrolysis will create some kind of a hydrogen film here, okay, H2 film, 
and then H2 film will break down and it will give you discharge. Okay, so let me show you this video so that uh, you can understand a little bit. Okay, okay. So you can see that uh, you can see the movement of uh, electrolysis process. Okay, and uh, uh, you can see that if you look closely, you will have some discharge, some kind of sparking for a process. Okay, you can see the clear yellow color here. Okay, so idea here is that you have to create a localized discharge. Okay. And because of this discharge, okay, the temperature on the workpiece, on the material, on the uh, workpiece material is very high. Okay, so temperature exceeds more than 2000 degrees Celsius. Okay, and because of the high temperature, we have a localized melting and vaporization of the workpiece material. Okay, so this workpiece material, for example, let, let me just show you this is a glass. Okay, and uh, let me just uh, show you. So that everybody can understand. So, okay. So this is a workpiece here, and we have the discharge process. Okay. So what will happen near this particular location? Okay. The temperature is going to be very very high. Okay. So if the temperature exceed the temperature melting uh, point of the workpiece material, then material is going to be removed by melting process. Okay. Uh, in the surrounding area, okay, we also have the chemical reaction. Okay. So for example, NaOH. Okay, is going to react with a silica. Okay, and it is going to create sodium silicate Na2SiO3. Okay, so because of this reaction, also the chemical etching of the material takes place, and the material is basically going to be removed. Okay, so let me show you this video one more time so that you guys can uh, understand a bit, and then I will come back, go back to the previous slides. Okay, so. Okay, so we have a discharge process. Okay, you can see that the discharge is only taking place below that tip, not everywhere, only on the, this particular tip. Okay, and because of that particular discharge, the material is going to be removed. Okay, right. So let me go back to the previous slide so that I can explain you the basic principle. Okay, now what I mentioned that uh, we have uh, a Tool electrode, which is going to be negative polarity. We have a positive counter electrode, which is going to be positive here, and the workpiece is basically kept below. Okay, remember the workpiece is non-conductive. Okay, now what is going to happen? So when you uh, create uh, apply potential between negative polarity and positive polarity, okay, what will happen here? The first of all, it's an electrolyte, right? And since we have added some alkaline medium, okay. What will happen? This water will go under electrolysis, right? It is going to create this kind of ions. Sorry. Okay. Now this H plus, okay, they will basically move towards the negative polarity here, right? So negative polarity, which is going to be, right? So you have a bubble formation. Okay. Now what is going to happen near the tool electrode here? This H plus, because this is a source of uh, negative uh, electrons, okay? They are going to form a hydrogen gas bubbles. Okay, so these bubbles are visible on this kind of a. This is a tool electrode. Okay, now with time and if you apply a voltage a bit more, okay, the bubble size is going to be more. Okay, so you can see that now the bubble size is growing, and after some point of a time, they are going to create a film. Okay, so here we have this hydrogen gas film. Okay, now. Uh, what will happen if you apply the voltage beyond a critical voltage? Okay, for example, 40 volt plus. Okay, this hydrogen gas film it will basically break down. Okay, so this will behave as a dielectric. Okay, as you know in your uh, electronics engineering that dielectric okay has a certain strength called dielectric strength. Okay, it means that if you apply any electric field, okay, electric field which is nothing but applied voltage by gas film thickness. Right. So if you apply enough electric field, okay, this dielectric will basically break down and ionization process will start. Okay. And ionization process is nothing but basically a discharge one. Okay. So because of this ionization, a lot of electrons will is going to be released, and these electrons are going to hit the workpiece. And because of that, the temperature is going to be very high, and the high temperature is, is going to cause the localized melting of the workpiece. Okay. Okay, so these are the like a uh, simple uh, indication, 
and like i said also that uh, uh, at this temperature at high temperature uh, sodium hydroxide also react with glass okay and form sodium silicate in a 2 SiO3 okay these are the so these are the basic uh, mechanism why the material removal is going to take place in case of glass so remember one is one region is basically the localized melting and vaporization because of the high temperature and second is going to be the chemical etching okay right so now i am going to skip this uh, slide because this is mainly for uh, mechanical engineering uh, uh, faculty members but if you have any question you can always ask later on okay right so if you look at this kind of process okay the process is going to be very very uh, low cost compared to because we do not require any expensive infrastructure we do not require any kind of expensive process it's very very easy thing okay so now uh, so when we started working on this kind of a process okay uh, so what we thought that uh, we are going to make this kind of a device so if you look at this kind of device this is nothing but a inductor right so we have a two pro pads and this is a three dimensional inductor okay this is 3d inductor why 3d because you can see that you are, have electrical signal coming from this side okay it is going to the uh, through this uh, via it is going to the back side from back side it is again coming up and so on okay so this is a three dimensional inductor made in a glass okay so this was a very special thing okay because not many people are working on uh, three dimensional technology and out of those things people are mainly working on silicon but not on the glass because of the existing challenges okay so what we have thought that uh, uh, depending upon what how many number of holes we have to create okay we will make accordingly we will make a tool electrode so for example in this example you can see one two three four five six seven and eight okay we we need to create eight holes okay so we have developed a process okay which can make us a customized tool electrode okay so we can create a, a customized tool electrode number of tips we can vary and then using this customized tool electrode okay using the ecdm process we will create this kind of a through holes so idea here is very simple okay so depending upon the number of vias we want what is the distance between uh, these features okay we can create this kind of a tool electrode and then we can use ecdm process to create the through holes once through holes are formed then we could easily do this kind of a uh, process okay so this was the uh, kind of a new thing which we started about uh, four years back okay now um, we so far we do not have any kind of a commercial uh, supplier okay so ecdm process is still kind of a growing field we do not have any kind of a commercial equipment supplier so what we have done we have developed our own process okay similar kind of a work is also going on in iit kanpur iit Roorkee, okay in iit madras also so people have mainly this kind of a uh, own setups so we have also developed our own setup here so which has a basically a simple uh, xyz three axis uh, system here okay so it means that uh, we can move the tool head in downward direction z okay and this table can be moved both x and y here okay so this is a supplier here and we have this kind of a pulse power supply okay which will provide you different kind of frequency different kind of voltage and so on okay uh, so during this process we have used uh, not only it's like single tip okay we have used a variety of the a variety of the tool electrodes okay so mainly our uh, novelty of our group is on a multi tip formation okay so multi tip array this is our kind of a new thing which we believe which has not been reported by others okay so how we are creating this kind of a tool uh, electrode so there's a process called wire edm okay so wire edm is going to be utilized this, uh, to create this kind of uh, multi tool tip array okay and as i said that uh, this is totally in our control if we want for example 2 by 5 okay so this 2 by 5 uh, 1 2 3 5 on this side 2 on the side this kind of tool electrode was being utilized for making inductors okay if you want a large number of array you can say this is a 5 by 5 1 2 3 4 5 and this is 8 by 8 arrays okay so idea here is that whatever is the number of tips whatever is, is a position 
okay we will able to create this kind of a two electrode now look at the two electrode dimensions what is that size here so at the tip size here the size was roughly about 150 okay so it means that the minimum uh, the minimal hole size which is possible in case of a tool ecdm process is roughly about 200 micrometer or more than that okay at present uh, it is not possible for us to create uh, uh, holes which are having less than 100 micrometer because of the limitation of the tool electrode okay we are working on that that what are the other things other uh, innovation we can do which is which can create us uh, uh, sub 100 micrometer hole size but right now our limit is something about 200 micrometer and more than that okay uh, so this earlier slide was about array tool okay but we can also create this kind of uh, uh, you know line array tool okay so this kind of line array tool is basically utilized for microchannel formation and as you can see that okay the tip size is going to be roughly about 150 200 in order okay uh, now let me just show you uh, i think this is just a picture just to show that what is the happening in the process here and now in this picture you can clearly see this is the glass slide okay this is the glass workpiece okay this is the tool electrode which is going to be connected to negative polarity this is the ring which is going to be positive polarity okay and this is the electrolyte and so on okay right now um, so we have done a lot of uh, process parameter optimization we have investigated the effect of different uh, process parameters so I'm not going in detail uh, about those parameters. Okay, I'm just showing you the some of the final results. Okay, so now if you look at this thing, okay, so the uh, we are able to now create uh, the holes which are having up to 200 micrometer. This is the minimum hole we can get it in a glass uh, slide. Okay, and if you look at this glass slide, the thickness can be up to 0.5 to 1.1 millimeter also. Okay. So up to one millimeter uh, glass uh, wafer, we are able to create it. Now, what is the major thing? Okay, the main thing is that the time taken to complete this process is less than five minutes. Okay, so the process is very simple. It does not utilize any expensive uh, consumables. Okay, it only requires sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide as an alkaline medium. Okay, the required uh, the voltage is also uh, varying from 40 to 60 volt okay so it, there's no expensive consumable uh, compared to plasma matching process right the equipment is also very simple okay so that is the major thing now uh, so once we have optimized this kind of a through hole uh, machining process okay what we have done is let me just show you okay so this is a process to create uh, the 3d inductor devices so we started with a glass wafer okay so this is a fuse silica okay we were able to create the through holes similar through holes uh, what we have indicated in the previous slide okay after that we have to fill the electroplated copper these holes has to be filled with electroplated copper so what we have done we have taken another wafer okay we have bonded these wafers with the glass wafer and then we utilize this bottom up electroplating bottom up means that during the electroplating process okay we have connected this thing with the negative power supply or negative polarity and uh, then in copper is going to be electroplated from bottom to top something like this okay that's why this is known as a bottom up electroplating process okay so once these holes were filled then we have polished from the both sides okay and then we have then after that we have formed this kind of a metal lines okay which is a standard uh, lithography process okay right now one of the major important thing if you compare this technique with the previously technique that since we are using fused silica okay we do not require any expensive uh, insulation or barrier layer okay that is the major advantage so for radio frequency applications okay this has a glass has a major advantage because of that okay so again so our approach okay we wanted to basically build up this kind of devices okay toroidal inductor for example okay or spiral inductor which has been shown in this picture 
okay so idea is again the same so you have a uh, okay you have an electrical signal coming through that okay going back side and upward by using this kind of a uh, daisy chain structure okay so we have two devices toroidal as well as spiral inductors okay and what are the results let me just indicate you quickly okay so we took a glass uh, substrate fuse glass substrate so in iit bombay we have a 2 inch substrate so we have just taken that okay so we have created this kind of a through holes okay now if you look at here okay the size of the holes are little bit bigger so at the top we have 520 okay we have at the bottom we have 325 and so on okay the minimum hole as i said we have got over in the order of 250 but not uh, less than 200 micrometer okay so in future our objective our current uh, objective is to reduce the size of the through holes which has to be less than 100 micrometer but uh, we are still working on that particular process here okay so these pictures basically indicate about the through hole formation in the fused silica okay now a uh, couple of more pictures let me show you this is a, a standard fused silica substrate and as you can see that okay these are the image after the through hole formation then we have bonded with another substrate okay this picture is uh, after the copper filling so as you can see that copper is totally overfilled okay then we have removed uh, first on the back side okay and finally at the uh, front side also okay so this picture basically indicate about that in the uh, whole wafer the copper is completely filled with that so after that, let me see a couple of more pictures, okay. Uh, this is the picture we have taken during the process itself, okay. So this basically indicates the bottom-up copper filling approach, okay. Uh, so during this process, we were also interested in uh, finding that what is the electrical characteristics, okay, whether this uh, uh, we are good enough or not, okay. So we had carried out uh, some uh, daisy chain structure, okay. And we have measured the, the resistance of a single via. Okay, so single via resistance was coming something about 250 milli ohms. And we have got a perfect ohmic characteristics. Okay, passing through the 0, 01. And as you can see, that this is roughly about uh, 20, uh, roughly about 24 uh, milli volt. Okay, and the current is going on 100 milli. So the resistance of a single via is roughly about 250 milli ohms or less than that okay so this was good enough uh, for our applications and uh, let me go back okay so this was the basic uh, array tool now in order to create uh, this uh, total inductor okay so we have to create this kind of a uh, tool electrode okay so as you can see that this is a 2 by 5 uh, tool electrode okay we have created on a wafer scale so there are five devices one two three four five okay all the holes all the holes are basically created in the same time so first we have created this one then one this one and like that okay uh, <clears throat> so once the through holes are formed okay this is the picture for the toroidal inductor okay i think this is clear with everybody okay uh, let me go back uh, yeah okay so finally once we have created this kind of via the only task was left was to form this kind of a interconnections okay so we have created this one front this is what you know as a front side this is known as a back side uh, ideal okay so both front side and back side of ideal they were formed with the traditional uh, approach okay because we have to create uh, this front line and the back line by using lithography based approach. So we are able to create this kind of a structure here. So this one structure here is for the toroidal inductor. Similarly, we have also created this kind of a spiral inductors. Okay. So for spiral inductors, there are only two holes needed. One is on that side. Okay. Another is going on, on this side. So this one, these are the two holes which we have to create. Okay. So the point which I'm trying to highlight here is that this approach is totally uh, depend upon the users. Okay. If you want more number of holes, okay, you have to simply make a tool electrode, which will have a higher number of holes. If you want to spiral inductors, okay, you can create by yourself. Okay. 
So by using this kind of a process, we were able to create uh, 3D inductors. We have carried out both DC uh, measurement and some of the RF characteristics, okay, which we have shown here. Okay, couple of other designs you can see that. Okay, so here we can simply say this. Uh, this is also a two by five, but the things are a bit, little bit different from this one. Okay. So idea here is that because we are from mechanical engineering uh, background, so our major objective was to show the process capability of this approach. Okay, but uh, with collaboration with uh, one of our electrical colleagues, we were also able to characterize some of the RF characteristics of this particular inductor also. Okay, so now uh, if you look at uh, this uh, slide so far, you will realize that we had first created a PGV through glass formation approach, okay, by using ECDM process, okay, and after that we have created this front side and back side RDL, okay, which basically so this is a front side, okay, and this black color which is is visible in this picture or in this thing this is known as a back side, okay. So this back side and front side RDL they were formed uh, by the clean room process okay clean room process means they require lithography sputtering process uh, electroplating and so on okay so later on we found that uh, it was not easy for most of the researchers within india okay many of us they do not have a direct uh, access to clean room process right so we were thinking that uh, can we create a process which does not require any clean room okay so idea here is that can we create a process which does not require clean room which can be easily done by a normal working environment okay so we are calling this as a lithography process okay lithography free process or in another word clean room free process okay uh, so so what is the difference so on the left hand side you will see that uh, this is a conventional rdl formation okay conventional means the lithography based patterning process okay now what is the difference okay if you can look at the closely uh, which is shown here on this side okay so let me just show you from this picture so in the traditional way of formation the front side all the metal lines they are on the front side something like this okay so this one here is uh, via this electroplating okay and this is front side this is back side and both front and back side are uh, they are formed on top of the substrate okay as you can see that there's some height here okay some height this could be 5 micrometer 10 micrometer and so on okay now in order to create this structure, we require clean room process, we require lithography, we require sputtering process for serial deposition and other things. And our idea was that can we create some kind of process which does not require this one and can be done without any clean room. Okay. So we have come out with one of the process. Okay. So idea here is basically from this to this. Now, if you look at this uh, process here, okay, the clean room which is shown here. So this idea is here is something like this. I'm trying to show you the picture. Okay. Something like that. So yeah, something like this kind of a substrate. Okay. So you can see that we sorry, let me just uh, rub it off a little bit. So that um, yeah, something like this. Okay. So if we have a front side here, back side is this much. This is back side. Okay. This is front side. Okay. And this is the TGB. Okay. Or okay. now, if you look at this side, what is the difference in this side? The both front and back side is on the top of the substrate okay but in this picture here the both ideals okay they are etched inside the substrate okay so word inside is critical here inside the substrate okay here is on top of substrate right now 
so i will come back to you a little bit later that what are the advantage but what the very first advantage is that you can see that uh, compared to the left hand side picture this surface will have extremely flat surface right so you can see that the surface is extremely flat now what is the advantage here so if you remember the slide which i had shown you from samsung where multiple devices are stacked on top of each other right so if you want to stack these kind of devices on top of each other if you have a flat surface it is going to be much better compared to this one because here the support area will be this one okay so all the stress will come on the this part but if you have a flat area the entire substrate is going to take that particular load so the actual stress is going to be lower okay that is the one of the obvious thing second thing is that this particular approach okay is without using any kind of a lithography any kind of expensive cleanup process which i am going to show you right right so let me just show you because this is an unpublished work okay so if you can see that we are able to create uh, the structure okay various kind of structure so for example this is a one four turn this is three turn okay both spiral and square shape structure okay without using any clean room process okay and just to show you the transparency so this this substrate is basically made on a glass substrate here okay so this is a glass substrate this is a front side ideal this is okay there are two two through holes okay they are not completely filled deliberately to sh sh uh, shape the overall time okay but you can see that they are still going to be connected together okay so if you connect uh, from this side to this side you will get a electric conductivity okay so we are able to come out with this kind of a low cost fabrication approach okay by which we can create any kind of a structure on a glass substrate okay and uh, it does not require any expensive process okay so now in order to create this kind of uh, we can create uh, through holes okay in order to create this kind of spirals we had utilized the process the same process electrochemical discharge machining okay but we are calling as a milling because instead of going for a drilling okay we are moving the tool electrode so the process is still the same except that the tool is basically moving okay the tool electrode is moving in the xy plane okay and uh, if you look at the process okay the basic methodology basic principles parameters are going to be the exactly same okay only thing is that we, instead of going in a in a vertical direction okay we are moving in x and y direction okay so by using this kind of a multi pass approach okay so for example we, we have gone this direction we have got some etching okay then we can repeat this process multiple pass okay and we can create different kind of a deep structure so for example uh, up to 1.1 mm thick plate glass plate which is basically utilized in uh, several biological application we are able to create this kind of a uh, blind channels okay and through channels by using this kind of process okay so there are a lot of parameters which i have not uh, gone in detail because of the time constraints okay but uh, we can easily say 10 20 and 30% of the concentration okay if you increase the concentration of course the chemical etch rate is going to be higher one okay so using this kind of process uh, again this uh, milling process is having a lot of flexibility okay depending upon the tool path okay which the tool is taking you can create any kind of a shape spiral shape straight shapes okay you can create different kind of a zigzag structure with a reasonable good amount of a surface finish okay you can basically do that okay um let me see uh, yeah okay so now uh, the process uh, which we are uh, making it okay is indicated here okay so as i already mentioned that we are trying to make this kind of uh, embedded structure so idea here is very simple you first create this kind of structure okay so this is here is the front side okay this is is a back side on the back side of the ideal okay let me just show you the picture so that everybody can understand okay if so if there is a glass piece what we are doing current first we are etching the sample like that okay we are creating this sample something like this okay something like this okay then we are going on the back side we are creating the corresponding channel here so the current channel is basically formed here okay and after that we are creating through holes 
at this particular site and after that we are making this kind of a contact pads okay so using this kind of a process we are the complete structure can be created by the electrochemical discharge machine process okay we are also uh, in future we are also working on uh, uh, with uh, this kind of a fuel cell application Okay, with the Professor Pinto's collaboration. Okay, so idea is very much uh, same. That the process is same, the methodology is same, and we are going to the only is application how you are going to utilize is going to be different. Okay. Um, let me see. So finally, this is uh, one of our recent work, which on which we are still working on that. Okay. So uh, if you look at my previous slide so far, okay, we are always talking about uh, you know very small holes, right? where hole size is something about 200 micrometer, 300 micrometer and so on. But for many commercial application, we have realized that uh, we also require large holes. Okay. So for example, uh, if you look at any kind of, let's say, uh, for example, lab on a chip application or microfluidic application, we require larger holes so that we can connect it to the corresponding tubes for providing the uh, fluid. Okay. So for example, let me just show you here. So for example, if you have a glass slide, I'm showing you the top view only, right? So in, in very simple word, let's say that I have one micro channel, I have another micro channel. Okay, they are meeting together, mixing them together. Okay, and this is all. So for example, this is, so we have to also connect to the tubing, okay? This is going to be another tubing. So this is going to be the input number one. Okay. We can have an input number two. Okay. And this one is going to be output, right? So these channels, they will be very small. Typically, for example, 100 micrometer to 500 micrometer. Okay. Width wise, depth could be also the same order. But these holes which are required for connecting the tubing, they are typically large. For example, one millimeter, two millimeter and so on. Right. So if I want to utilize this kind of a prototype for any kind of industrial application, we have to also create this kind of a through holes. Okay. So these kind of a bigger through holes is a bit more problematic. Okay. So we are working on, we have come out with some kind of a uh, new concept. Okay. For creating this kind of a large hole. So if you look at this thing, this large hole, this is about seven millimeter. Okay. 7 millimeter diameter hole, we are able to make it. Now, again, people can question that what is the difficulty? For example, you, some people uh, can also uh, utilize the drilling process or a diamond drill bit. Okay, we can do that. But our idea was to uh, find out whether we can create the entire device, okay, including micro channels, through holes, blind through holes, small and large hole in by the same process. Okay, so that uh, we can reduce the overall cost as low as possible. Okay. So we have first created this kind of through holes, we have created a channel also. Okay, we have come out with this kind of a simple device. Okay. And uh, just to test it, let me just show you that testing. So we have a, a ink. Okay. Let me just show you quickly. Okay, so we have dropped the ink. Okay. Now you can see that clearly, okay, the fluid is basically moving. Okay. Right. Now remember, let me just show you first. Okay. So you can see that the fluid is moving just under the normal gravitational condition. We are not utilizing any kind of pressurized flow. Okay. We are only simply using it. Okay. With a drop of uh, this fluid and basically moving. So typically about, I think 20, 30 seconds. Okay. The fluid is basically coming from up to this particular portion. Okay, so this is still our preliminary results. Okay, in the beginning, you can see some some of the spilling is happening because uh, we have not bonded this particular glass slide. Together. We have just kept another glass slide on, on that side and put some kind of a tape just to test our process. But surprisingly, the results were quite good. I mean, with a single drop under the gravitational condition, okay, fluid is basically reaching up to this particular part. Okay, so we are currently working on uh, this kind of a concept, low cost uh, method of glass etching. Okay, we are working on how to bond uh, two glass pieces together by using any kind of uh, uh, either adhesive based approach or some other approach which has to be low cost. Okay, and then once we have this thing, then we can have a lot of application both for fluidic application, biological application, and so on. Okay, 
So that is our uh, still ongoing kind of work. Okay, so I think I already took almost one and a half hour. Okay, so I'm going to summarize my thing. So uh, I, what I want to indicate here is that uh, this uh, process, uh, electrochemical discharge process, this is a definitely a very low cost alternative to those expensive process which are typically about laser ablation. Okay, anyone who is having some basic facility at their college institute, okay, they can develop this kind of a process. Okay. And after that, uh, they can, depending upon their own skills, okay, innovation, you can basically come out with different kind of designs, okay, different kind of a process, okay. And once you have something, you can easily uh, uh, come out with a lot of application, especially for MEMS application, okay. So we have shown you basically through hole formation, planar structures, but uh, there are a lot of other possibilities that you can combine them together for different materials and then you can utilize it, okay. So our uh, in, like new point which we would like to highlight here is that the formation of through, goal, through glass via, okay? This has been first time it has been demonstrated by using this kind of simple approach, okay? And lithography approach, making this kind of structures, devices without using any, any clean room, that is one of the new thing which we believe can really be helpful for many of the researchers who do not have a direct access to this kind of a clean room based process. Okay, that is one of the major advantage or major of this thing. Now we are also trying to work on uh, to transfer this process for a larger substrate. So for example, right now we are using this just a simple uh, glass slides. Okay, but we are going to uh, have it on a full scale wafer to have this thing. Okay, and uh, then you can create different kind of structure depending upon your own uh, background. So those guys who are from RF background, radio frequency background, it is easily come out with uh, uh, RF antennas, okay, inductors, uh, RF switches, and anything on a glass, we can easily do that. Okay. So this is the, like I said, this is the main of majority of this work has been sponsored under this imprint project, uh, which is sponsored by MHRD and Desire. Most of the work has been uh, done by my students, and I'm fortunate enough to get some good student, very motivated and dedicated students. So. I like to thank them and this is the funding agencies. Okay. So with this, uh, I am uh, going to end with my uh, seminar. Okay. So let me go back to this thing. Let me. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask those questions. I understand that many of you are not from mechanical engineering background. So you may have some questions on the process or fundamentals, but please feel free to ask those questions. Participants, any queries uh, can kindly raise. Or if somebody wants to uh, visit my laboratory for any kind of experiments, or they would like to know about this process, you are more than welcome to visit IIT Bombay and contact me anytime. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sir, actually, uh, even if our students, uh, uh, if they're willing to uh, do some uh, experimental work in your laboratory, how, uh -huh. how can they approach, sir? Uh, see, uh, earlier the problem was very easy. Uh, but now, because of this, uh, as you know, that IT Bombay is having a lot of land issue, hostel issues. Okay, so we cannot provide uh, any kind of accommodation. That is one of the biggest problem we have. Okay, so if some of your student who can arrange any accommodation, okay, uh, then uh, it is possible for them to approach me or any other professor, and we will be ha happy to help them out. Okay, beside that, uh, the, we have another program which is uh, applicable for uh, final year students and also MTech student in which uh, IIT Bombay will provide them uh, scholarship, okay? But they have to stay within IIT Bombay for six months, okay? So that is an internship uh, opportunity. This is a very good popular program. So IIT will pay them, I think uh, it's 8,000 rupees, okay? Uh, okay? Which is going to be more than sufficient for uh, food and uh, arrange. And in some cases, they are IT also provide them accommodation. Okay, so normally we prefer that particular route. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, sir, uh, yeah. Do, uh, do the students need to 
uh, send a proposal or uh... yes yes so under that particular program because that is a competitive program okay we have certain requirement if i remember correctly that the student has to be in top 10% of the their class okay, okay. and uh, they need to so, so every year uh, of course because of covid thing everything has gone haywire but earlier uh, we used to have this kind of october november time frame we used to have uh, faculty have to propose different topics okay and those topics were basically shown to the students and the student have to choose couple of topics and there will be proper interview and based on those interview we used to offer them some internship position okay so okay. idea behind that particular project or uh, internship program is to motivate students so that they can start their research career as early as possible okay yes sir and yeah. uh, i can tell you that that project uh, has been successful it, it's running from last 3 years and uh, yeah i think uh, i have three students so far and two students were able to publish a journal paper a good journal paper okay uh, as a co-author based on that particular thing okay so that okay. is a very successful program i would say so will they de declare all those dates in the portal sir IIT yes, yes, yes everything uh, so everything will be notified to you i will also share this uh, data with professor pinto i'm not sure about this year now because of the covid situation but definitely this program is uh, will be running as soon as the things be become normal i think uh, we will going to run this program okay so a student uh, basically get uh, 8000 rupees per month up to 6 uh, 6 uh, month and they also get 50000 rupees for uh, buying some consumable in that project okay yes sir. so up to 50000 rupees it will uh, give them for their project so if they want to develop some kind of prototype or something then they can utilize that money okay so that is it yes sir thank you thank you sir so, any uh, questions from the any question audience participants any questions okay sir so it seems that uh, i thought i uh, explained them very fast no 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 sir it was very uh, good and actually when it was quite uh, informative also to us yeah. <laughs> yeah. so i have been in touch with a couple of professor from your college i think uh, yes sir so let's see yeah. okay <laughs> fine so so anyway fine, i mean if uh, some of the guys have any question so I have, uh, I think my email ID is very simple, pradeep.dikshit at itb.ac.in, okay? They can find publication related to this particular material, okay? They can always okay. contact me separately also, not a problem, okay? Fine. And as I said one more time, so IIT Bombay and in fact all the IITs are there encouraging uh, for other institutions, faculty members as well as students to have this kind of a collaboration, especially for research projects, okay? So okay. that... Uh, we can mutually get benefit because IT is also always looking for for good students and uh, other uh, researchers they are also looking for for better facilities. So it's going to be good for both of us. In, in that. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Okay, sir. Fine. So, okay. Uh, 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 one second, sir. Just a formal. Uh, yeah. Uh, right, sir. So I, Anish Jain Emery, on uh, behalf of Department of EC, AIT, uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, sharing your wonderful thoughts and uh, expertise with us, sir. <laughs> and, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Anish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK. Thank, thank you. <laughs> OK. Uh, so, yeah. Also, thank all the participants uh, for your interest and attention in the evening. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for being a wonderful uh, audience. Sure, sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Uh, by this, actually, we have come uh, to the end of uh, uh, day three. Okay. And uh, from uh, tomorrow, uh, again, the FTP starts by morning uh, uh, nine thirty, and uh, the first uh, session uh, will be by Dr. Uh, Kiran Kumar Bellavalid. Uh, it's on the topic uh, piezo resistive sensors by nine thirty a.m. Okay, so by this we can uh, wind up this session. Uh, thank you all. Have a have a good day. Bye. And uh, I also request all the participants to uh, submit the feedback forms as well as uh, uh, take up the.
tests which has been uh, shared through your emails as well as whatsapp so kindly fill up all those before uh, 7 pm today uh, because we have to update all these to uh, the act portal based on which the certificates will be issued okay so thank you all participants